Hey, it's Mr. Burtis here. Today we're going to go through and run it through its paces the uh, Win model HA5932 handheld spindle sander. I purchased this because uh, the benchtop ones one take up a lot of room, and I don't have a lot of room in my shop, so I can take this down and put it away. And two, I can actually mount it to the bench uh, and work with it. Yes, the spindles, you don't have as big of spindles as you can get with the bench top. This was uh, just over $50, and the bench top ones that I was looking at are well over uh, $200, $225 to $250. And so I'm going to give this a try. Go through some of the basics first, and uh, then we'll go ahead and use it. Basic operation, it's your uh, on-off switch right here. Uh, I don't particularly like this because it's... Uh, Hard to get used to to lock it in. You gotta push up, pull down, and then lock it down to keep it going and go back up. The other nice feature that I like is it actually has variable speeds right here. So it goes one through six. So you get that going. The thing it has that I really like, I've seen the others that I've seen, you have to have a screwdriver or a wrench to take this off. This is how you take the spindle apart. Main thing to remember is you're going to have a top washer and you're going to have a washer underneath. And the drum it compresses, that's what keeps the uh, sandpaper on the drum itself. So when you pull that out, both washers have a tendency to stick. So you want to make sure that you have both of those. The small washer goes on top, big washer goes inside, right there. One thing to note is the smallest one does not have a drum because when you take it apart, that slides right on the shaft. So you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this back together. Make sure you get this on tight, but don't over tighten it. That nice and tight. Comes with a dust port. It actually mounts on the back and will lock into place. It's got two little notches on the sides here that you actually have to line it up before you can lock it in. And then you lock it, lock it in by twisting it. It's got a bench, it's got a bench mount pad that you can actually put on the actual workbench. Do it like this because the other way you can operate it is like this, but uh, I have no need to do that. Comes with a guide that you can put on the top. Two little screw holes. Um, I won't use this for uh, this purpose because mainly what I need this for is rounding pieces off and uh, doing beveled edges. Comes with your two bench mount clamps and it just fits a two by four on your bench. That makes it nice. So I'm gonna mount mine on the bench. So I'm gonna put this on here like this. Get two sizes of the holes, one for the small, one for the large. And you're actually going to hook it into these two holes here. Put on like that. Get our clamps. Small L-shaped piece is the piece that's going to go in the hole. And you want to make sure it goes in all the way. Get that on there. Do the same on the other side, and you take the wing nuts, tighten those down. Now you got a nice uh, setup for your bench. So let's give this a try. Got my uh, dust collection system hooked up. Make little toy trucks, and so this is basically what I want it for: is the beveled edges. So we'll turn this on and see what happens. There you go. Simple and easy to use. Works, uh, work surface is about half the size of a bench top, but if uh, you're really going to use it a lot, you could actually build yourself a nice little uh, plywood table to match up with it. But this is perfect for my little projects in my shop. 
Uh, so we'll give this uh, uh, run for its money. Like I said, for me in my, in my shop, uh, I'm limited on space. So um, the less I have on the actual workbenches, the, the better. So I have more workspace. So what I really like about this and I like the portability is when I'm done, take it and put it up on my pegboard and it's up and out of the way. Always remember, dream, think, design, build, and learn. See you in the shop.